in this here make me tough to you snack cake to me yeah more house more house this been overdue forever forever ask me when it was dropping said never never should have made you cut the feather but i designed it freemason margella what's goody shell try here the most woke no joking out back out again with a brand new video i'm gonna keep it up both brave biscuit with you i lied to you i lied to every single one of y'all straight to your face and that's just something you have to deal with. Now, what did I lie about? You know, a few weeks back, I said I wasn't the type and I didn't like saying I told you so. Well, uh, this is one of them kind of things because in my last video, I think I said there were three keys to making sure that we win this game versus the Eagles. I said if Cam can stay under two interceptions, if we can stop their rush, and if we can get kind of exotic and get passes out to different guys on the field, we can definitely definitely win this game. I said we could also get a pass rush. We did get three sacks on the day, but there wasn't really a consistent pass rush coming in from our guys uh, throughout the whole game. But three sacks is still pretty good. And I'm not going to hold us. Um, our defense played decently at times. Look, I'll go from the beginning and get to the end because this game was the classic, classic cardiac cat type of game that you hate to see. This is the kind of game, this is the kind of team that you love and hate being a fan of because we get these close nail biter clinch clutch situation type of games every single week it's like it's like we have good teams we play and we have to beat these great teams and then we play bad teams like Russians, and we lose to them like we have these wild wild games and it's like every team we play is like it has to be some kind of clutch win or a really sad unclutch loss for us we won't get really too crazy you know acrobatic catches or you know 80 yard runs here and like all this other kind of stuff or like big time consistent defensive scoring kind of plays but we always make sure that every game is entertaining to the last second and this game was no different off top we played in the white jersey with the black pants again the looks kind of growing on me i wasn't really feeling it at first but i'm kind of i'm kind of coming around to this black pants white jersey look it's all right now, at first, I was really, really worried about our team because Eric Reed was wilding. He was going crazy before the game, and then he was crazy again in the early stages of the game where he had a really, really, really late hit on Carson, arguing with Zach Ertz. Like, I was really worried that Eric Reed was actually, maybe, potentially, not the greatest of pickups, but he did come in clutch for us later on in the game, and he did have a really good, impactful game today. So I really can't. And look, as long as winning the game, as long as you don't get suspended, as long as winning these games, I don't care what you're doing. And that's a big fact. I can't even lie to you. Now, there are some things I like that we're doing on the field early on. I saw us using Christian McCaffrey a lot more in a different kind of ways. We weren't just trying to, like, pound the ball with him with the rushing attempts. Now, even though we got off to a late start, and by late, I mean we didn't even get started until the second half. When I, and by that, I mean we didn't really get started to the fourth quarter. But there are still some pretty decent things on offense to take away from we we're using Christian McCaffrey in different ways we weren't trying to like pound the rock with him too much he only had seven whole carries this whole game so I mean we weren't trying to force the ball to him we got involved in the pass out of the backfield I mean seven rushes for 29 yards ain't the best it is 4.1 yards per carry and you do kind of want to see more out of your running back on the team but we're not the typical kind of running back team. It's kind of hard to explain. We're not a premier running back type of team. We're not a split back team. We're not even a thunder and lightning kind of team where it's like we have a really fast back and then a change of pace like pounding back, like between the tap kind of back. I really don't know what our identity is as a rushing team. Right now, I'm thinking it's Cam Newton. Just two words, Cam Newton. And that's what it really kind of looks like. Our defense throughout the first three quarters of this game was horrible. I mean, I don't know what to say. We weren't getting a lot of pass rush. The run was looking like it was working against us at first. Looking at the full stats of the game, the run was not working. I think the Eagles only had like 58 yards of rushing on us. 58 yards on 24 full attempts. But in the first half, it just looked like the run was really kind of gashing us a little bit. I don't know exactly what the deal was, but that one toss to the right, toss plays really do get us. If more teams ran the toss against our defense, they would get a lot more yards. But honestly, 58 total yards for the whole game, I'll take it. We ran for 120 yards between four different guys. If we can win the rushing battle while also stopping them on their running attempts, we can do a lot of really good work here. So the defense really did stop the run. It was the pass that really got me worried. Carson Wentz was just throwing it to anyone and everyone. There was like not just one guy who was really killing us. Like obviously Zach Ertz is going to do a lot of work against every single team. Nine catches, 138 yards, no touchdowns, but still, every time you looked up, 
This year, Carson Wentz was a completion. It was Zach Ertz, sideline, up the seams, in the middle of the field. At one point, after like a 10-yard catch, he got hit by Eric Reed, and Zach Ertz just gets up and smiles at him. He's like, look, you may have hit me now, but I'm going to get another catch on you here in a second. Zach Ertz was getting every single catch. It was like we had no kind of defense out there. Like It was really weird. Every single receiver was open. Alshon Jeffrey, seven catches for 88 yards, along of 29. There were three different Eagles receivers with longer than 20-yard receptions. And this is the very first game where Cam actually threw a pass that got completed over 20 yards, and that was a really, really, really late clutch catch. I'll get to that in a second. Look, I'm not going to hold you. The whole first three quarters of the game was basically a Carson Wentz, are you back kind of situation for the Eagles. It was like he was in practice just doing timing routes, like play action right here, one, two, three, pass, completions. It was looking really bad. And I got to thinking, like I was really mad at our defense at first, but I was thinking to myself, is this really more on the defense because they can't get off the field? Or is it more on the offense because they can't sustain long drives and get the defense a little bit of rest because we're getting three and out, three and out, three and out. I think at one point, throw this stat right here, the first five drives for us were all punts. And then we get to a situation where the Eagles had a 17 play, 94 yard, 10 minute drive that ended in a touchdown. That's what I thought to myself, hold up. Why can't our offense do this? The Eagles defense isn't that great. They're not amazing. They're forcing us to have our defense on the field for a full quarter. 10 minute drive? A 10 minute drive where your defense is on the field the whole time. So I gave them a little bit of a pass, but in the same kind of vein, literally every single receiver was open. There was no kind of coverage in the secondary at all. There was no kind of coverage in the secondary in the second level with the linebackers and coverage. There was really just nothing going on there for us in the first three quarters. Then fourth quarter came. And it was like Ron said, hey, guys, you want to start playing now or what? Or what? I don't know what to tell you. Like, what, what, what's going to happen? I go, we ain't stopping that Bojangles if you guys don't start playing. We ain't stopping that Bojangles on the way back if y'all don't start playing right now. It's like everyone said, hold up, coach. But Bojangles, we, we need them Supremes, bro. And everyone showed up. I mean, on our first touchdown, we got really exotic with that reverse to Curtis Samuel. And we're doing a little bit more of those exotic kind of plays, those reverses, those end arounds, those kind of things in this game. I want to see even more of that, Norv. Coach Turner, I need to see even more of that because it definitely works. Even if it's just fakes, there's motion guys out in the backfield, it gets the defense thinking. We establish that thought in the back of the head like, oh man, it might go to Curtis. It might go to Bird. It might go to DJ Moore here. They're going to think about it. And that half second, they might even check out of their play to play that end around or that reverse or that screen or, or that swing pass. We've all heard the saying that 90% of football is half mental, right? So we all know that there's a lot of things that can go into a defender's mind if there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of things going on there. Either way, I think as the season goes on, we'll see a little bit more of that sprinkled into our offense and if we can find our identity in the run game. If we get the run game going, we can do a lot more with the pass game. Our second touchdown was really set up more by a 30-yard pass from Cameron Jarius Wright. Jarius Wright doesn't really show up too much on the stat sheet, but when he does show up, he shows up big time. He's doing the same thing for us they did for the Vikings last year. He didn't really get on the field too much. He didn't have crazy, crazy stats. But when he was on the field, this man, Jarius Wright, makes plays. He is clutch, sure-handed, and he can get there for you. Devin Funches gets a touchdown, wide open left side of the field. What more can I say? It's like he wasn't even covered at all. Camp throws a nice little dot to him. And on a two-point conversion, Jarius Wright pokes his head out, sees his shadow, and says... We're getting two more points before the winner comes. And we get there. It's 14 to 17. This is when I got worried. I said, okay, we're coming in clutch in the fourth quarter. Not a lot of time left. What are we going to do? The defense shows up. We get a punt from the Eagles. And it's our time to shine. Okay. First and 10, bad pass from Cam. Second and 10, bad pass from Cam. Third and 10, what are we going to see? Is it a bad pass from Cam? You better bet it's another high pass from Cam. Like he's throwing to Monstars or something. I don't know who he thinks is on our team. I don't know if he thinks we have DeAndre Jordan or Blake Griffin, you know, just going up and snagging from above the rim. But we ain't got those guys in the squad right now. And he's throwing to dudes who are about 9, 10 feet tall. But on a really clutch, ridiculous Breaks out of like two would-be sacks, jump passes like he's Tim Tebow back down in Florida. I'm gonna tell you right now, I this this team, this team really loves to just just pull on your heartstrings. They just want to make sure you're you're watching the game. Like, okay, you gotta make sure you're invested to watching every single second of this game. If you give up on the team in the third quarter, you've already lost. Because look, we can come back on a snap of a finger, 
or we could lose a snap of a finger, but we make sure the game is entertaining at the very end of it. Now we may lose here and there, but we make sure it's must-see TV for every second of clutch time. And oh man, Cam is clutch, but he does it in the worst way possible. You do not want to see that. It makes for some really good highlights, but you don't want to see that from your team. Now I thought there was helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact on Bradham on that tackle. Didn't really matter. We get really, 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 really clutch with Greg Olson. Now, if we're really counting here, Greg only had two catches for five yards, but the real number we're looking at here is the six points he gave us with only about two minutes left, less than two minutes left in the game. That's the real number you have to look for there. Greg Olson is clutch and dependable. Now, if I was worried about our offense in that clutch drive, then you already know I was worried about our defense and this even more clutch drive to stop the Eagles with what? They had two timeouts left. Now Carson Wentz has only been stopped, I think, once or twice in the whole game. And it looked like, I think it was Alshon Jeffrey, it looked like he had a wide open touchdown. James Bradbury had the wherewithal. He got beat, but he said, look, if I get beat, I gotta just drag you down, bro. Now it looks kind of bad and it feels bad to have to depend on that kind of thing. But I do respect the decision to just go for the DPI and live to fight another play and say, look, I'll just lock up next play. He won't get by me deep when he's in the red zone, basically. So I haven't been from me the whole time. <sighs> Bradbury, it's all good. He'll get to that Eric Reed play. Steph Curry said it was a pick. Now, was it actually a pick? Uh, I don't know. But look, Eric Reed really could have sealed the game for us right there. But he didn't, and it was all good. And then Mike Adams, I think a play or two later, could have sealed the game for us when the ball bounces right off his numbers. The, the ball hits both of his numbers. Boom, boom, falls off him. His hands are just right here doing, I don't know, the Macarena or something. When it came down to make the play, could Carson Wentz do it? Nah. I'm talking about a strip. I'm talking about a forced fumble. I'm talking about the Panthers defensive line watching that video for a couple days saying, wait, no pass rush? No, we not clutch? They said, I got you, bro. They stripped Carson Wentz. We fall on the ball, a little bit anticlimactic there, a little bit, but look, we get there. Look, the Panthers, if nothing else, we are the Cardiac Cats, 21 to 17. I think my score prediction was 24 to 21, wasn't it? I think it was 24, 21, us. Like I said, low scoring, and this game is gonna go down to who has the ball last and who wants the game more. And it turned out it was us today. Luke Keekley had 14 tackles, Eric Reed had eight tackles, which is really more because, I mean, they were just getting passes in the backfield a lot. As a DB, you get a lot of tackles when there's only been three whole passes defended the whole game. 60 minutes of football, three passes defended. Look, we won the game, can't hate too much, but we do need to draw something up for the secondary because, whoo, that's tough. Anyway, man, this is a great game. This is, I wanna watch this game again. I wanna do another video after this, maybe on Tuesday, with my second time viewing the game kind of reaction because I really did like this game a lot in the fourth quarter. I might just do a fourth quarter breakdown. Oh man, the highlights for this video is gonna be crazy. What are your thoughts on this game, man? I hope there's some Eagles fans in this video because I wanna know your thoughts as well. Bro, this is probably the best game that came on in this one o'clock slot. This might be the best game of the week. Panthers win. 21-17. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And you already know to do with that like button. Cheers to you, appreciate the chance. Being told y'all I've been the man. Being told y'all I had the gift. Tell a friend, to tell a friend. Real ones gonna recommend. Count this as another win.